This is the iBOS EaseDry. It's a filament dryer for FDM 3D printers that costs less than a spool of most high temperature materials. Curious to learn more? It's pretty well known that 3D printer filament is hygroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture out of the air. Historically, there haven't been a lot of consumer-ready solutions that allow users to remove this moisture from the filament once it's been absorbed. Given the large impact this can have on the overall printability of a material, a company called iBOS released a product called the Cyclopes. The Cyclopes is a filament dryer that can hold two spools and individually change both temperature as well as duration of the heat cycle to bake the material. Ibo sent me a beta unit to get my general feedback and thoughts on the machine, and I really liked it. In fact, I use the Cyclopes on almost every print I make. Despite its great performance, the price tag of the Cyclopes might be off-putting to some users. At over $150, it's not cheap. For comparison, the EaseDry comes in at $48.99 with free shipping. And the reason this is actually pretty surprising is a spool of nylon material with chopped carbon fiber actually costs more than the ease dry itself. This means if you're printing high temperature material, salvaging a single spool of this material for a moisture related damage using the ease dry will allow it to pay for itself. The ease dry is clearly designed as a more entry level piece of equipment, so it's missing some of the more advanced features found on the Cyclopes. Things like an internal thermostat and timer are missing from the ease dry, but it's still a very capable piece of equipment if you're just looking to dry your filament. The ease dry is not much larger than a spool of filament, it pretty much houses one perfectly. In comparison, the Cyclopes is much larger, it holds two spools and it's got a footprint comparable to some smaller FDM 3D printers. The controls for the ease dry have been simplified compared to the Cyclopes. On the back of the unit, there's an input for a power cord as well as a power switch, and on the front of the unit, there's a knob that goes between PLA and nylon. This color-coded material selection matrix is fully broken out in the manual, with each material type having a recommended temperature and time. Materials that extrude at a higher temperature, like polycarbonate and nylon, require a higher temperature for a higher duration of time. The ease dry itself feels compact and sturdy. Pulling down on the loop allows the door to be removed from the unit, and it's interesting to note it's actually double pane, so it's very well insulated. The spring-loaded loop is a surprisingly clever solution, and it gives you some feedback when it shuts in the form of a little click. Just like the larger Cyclopes, filament can be fed through multiple holes on the ease dry, including the front, top, and back of the unit. This is helpful if the ease dry sits next to the printer or above it, and it gives you some flexibility in the overall configuration of your equipment. The EaseDry has a recessed compartment inside the unit where you can put a few packs of silica gel. This helps with the overall level of moisture absorption and it's a nice touch to add before you load the filament. Inserting the spool is a straightforward process and I like to start by feeding the filament through the hole that connects to the PTFE tubing before putting the spool in. This is a little bit easier than doing it the other way around and it also reduces the risk of the filament unwinding or unraveling when you put the spool in. Once the filament's been fed through, we can take the PTFE tube and push it down into the coupler, and now we're pretty much ready to go. The last step of the process is closing the door by pulling down on the loop and letting it shut. Before we move on, let's talk about spool size. I found that about half the spools I had worked in the ease dry and the other half didn't. So when I say worked, what I mean is the actual thickness of the spool allows the door to close, but it's too tight to rotate. So once the spool is in there, tugging on the filament means the filament spool is sort of scraping against that clear door and it's not rotating freely. In this example, I'm using a spool of Jesse PLA from Printed Solid, and you'll notice that the spool fits okay, but it's kind of flush with the actual axle. It just sits on top. So the door shuts, and when I pull on it, there's a lot of resistance. I, I really have to tug on this thing to get it to move. I measured the thickness of the spools that worked and found measurements between 60 and 65 millimeters. However, the Printed Solid spool, which didn't work, measured about 75 millimeters thick. This actually lines up with the specs that iBOS provides on their site. They recommend a maximum spool thickness of 72 millimeters. It's not really a deal breaker, but if you use a specific type of material, you'll want to check that it will work with the ease dry before you purchase it. The measurement of relative humidity inside the ease dry dropped from about 38% to 11% after a few hours of active heating. 
I have the ease dryer hooked up to my Prusa and you can see that the filament is being fed directly from the enclosure into the extruder of the printer. And one of the first things I noticed was even though this filament was pretty old, there wasn't a single pop or bubble during printing. And the overall quality of the model looks pretty solid. Normally there would be some voids or I would expect to have a couple of inconsistencies in the vertical shells as this model was being printed using old filament, but it looks really consistent. Especially when printing with more hygroscopic materials like nylon, this is a very important function. So the question you probably have is, is the ease dry worth it? And it really depends on your specific application, but considering the low cost, I would say it definitely makes sense to have one of these units, especially if you're using high temperature material. If you're interested in learning more about the iBOS ease dry, you can find a link in the description of this video to the iBOS site. As always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.